Welcome back to At Home with Amy Jean. Today we are going to finish this project. Here's the part one finished product, half finished product. <laughs> and today we're gonna get on it and finish up. I will go ahead and link the video for part one so you can see just how we did it as far as cutting out like the baseboards and figuring out how to fit these butcher block countertops on top of the bottom cabinets of these Ikea Havsta cabinet shelf unit things. So yes, it is coming along so well. And I think I'm only gonna build one of these upper boxes for you to see, otherwise it seems to get a little redundant and make for a very long video. So I'm doing my best to cut it down to what's interesting, <laughs> at least what I think is interesting. If you clicked on this, maybe you think it's interesting too. You'll see my kids running in and out. I am a mama of three and a wife to my husband, Scotty. We homeschool in this room, as well as my husband has a kind of extensive game collection. He plays board games a lot, as well as video games in this room. These cabinets, the lowers, are all his games, except for a small portion of our family slash kid games. It is coming together really well, and stay tuned for the end of the video. We'll have a before and after of what it looked like before we started this project with some black IKEA cube units and a black bookshelf and it's totally revamped this whole space with white and bright and then warming up the white and bright with the piece of butcher block countertop between the lowers and the uppers. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and let you listen to some good music and I'll check back in a few minutes. This is as good a day as any To start the rebuilding of life The roads that lay open are many When the old one's gone under the knife And I can feel the sun on my skin This screwdriver has quickly become one of my very favorite tools. When my husband came home with it, I don't know, a few years ago, I had never seen anything like it. It has a gyroscope in it. So all you have to do is turn your wrist like slightly to one side. And the farther you turn your wrist, the faster it goes. If you turn your wrist the other way, it screws the other way or unscrews the other way slow to fast based on how far you turn your wrist and I use it for anything and everything. It has become our tool that we keep in the kitchen for replacing batteries in the kids toys or I don't know any random thing that you need a screwdriver for in the house. This is the most awesome thing. It's kind of expensive. It is an electric screwdriver so it's not just a basic screwdriver that you would keep in the kitchen usually but yeah anyways I thought I'd give a little shout out to this DeWalt screwdriver. I will link it in the description box if you want to check it out. We as a family have really loved having it.
tomorrow there's no time to borrow today well something's gotta give today is a good day to day and not tomorrow I got these boxes with the Ikea order. I ordered them at the same time as I did these cabinets and I actually really like them. I wasn't 100% sold when I ordered them online because I wasn't really sure how big they would actually be and if I would like the like cardboard material that they are. But they are like a linen, almost like a burlap material on the outside covering the hard cardboard. And so it's a pretty sturdy material and I, <laughs> I couldn't find the little paper that went inside the label part and oh there it is inside the box folded in so whoops but found it <laughs> And so I got two of these boxes and I used one for some of his smaller games and then I ended up using the other one for my puzzles that I like to do and that I wanted to keep. I have a few of the Disney Thomas Kincaid jigsaw puzzles that I really like to do. The game shelves that are the lower cabinets were full. <laughs> so some of his games did not fit underneath. By using these boxes and in this basket, I'm able to hide some of the more colorful things um, and have them up behind the glass doors up on the bookshelves up top. And then this part here, we decided that we did not want to lose that outlet. We wanted to be able to still plug some things in if we needed to from this wall. And so he got one of these flat extension cords. So where it plugs in, it plugs in flat and then we ran into a problem that he did not like that it was facing down it's a three prong plug and so he turned the outlet upside down which I did not know that you could do and so there it is isn't that kind of neat so now he's gouging out behind the edge of the cabinet so that this cord can go seamlessly up the wall behind it and come out the top. So we do have an outlet hanging out at the top of these shelves in case we wanted to plug anything in, which we actually ended up plugging in like a router extension thing for our internet at home. So um, it turned out to be pretty smart, I think. It worked out and yeah, I never would have thought of it on my own. So I'm thankful for this husband of mine that <laughs> thinks ahead for that sort of thing.
So during that song, Scotty did all of the drilling for the wall anchors for these upper bookshelves. And then he also started screwing the bookshelves to the countertops. And we ran into a problem where they weren't lining up very well because our wall, like we said earlier, actually in the last video, is that the wall is not square. So they weren't lining up quite right. And so we ended up taking these shelves down and cutting off a little bit more of the drywall to, to let things kind of smush into the wall a little bit easier so they could line up together and not have quite um, a significant seam line between the units. So while we were figuring this out. We had to finagle it a little bit and kind of force hold it together while he screwed the bookshelves down into the countertops. And we decided, I think, to close that gap a little bit more by putting another screw horizontally between those two units because it just was not sitting tightly or as tightly as I wanted it to. While I was holding these as tightly as possible, he was screwing them down and we just, you know, you figure it out as we go along. If I was doing this by myself, I would be completely lost and really angry that I couldn't get it to line up right, as if maybe I built it wrong or <laughs> I don't know. I'm so thankful that I have um, a handy guy that can help me figure this out and or find a way to make it work. I would be up waiting for you if you had to leave. doing a little bit of cleanup before we start to install the doors on the uppers the glass doors and it's just finally happening we're almost done thank you so much for staying for so long and watching this video i can't wait for you to see final reveal at the end did you ever stop and think why spend too much time just getting ready let me be honest i don't know a single thing that i haven't done to make you notice me let me be real here when i see you my heart starts racing but i don't know if i like this chasing and playing and waiting around it's a shame that my hands start shaking
you my heart starts racing but i don't know if i like this chasing and playing and waiting around it's a shame that my hands start shaking all of the time when you're around me but this time this time working on the doors, getting the hinges all uh, assembled. And while he is attaching the doors, I am working on the handles or the little knobs. The silver ones are what came from Ikea with these units and I did not like them. <laughs> so I of course went on Amazon and found these more kind of antique, kind of brushed brass looking ones that I thought looked nicer and kind of warmed it up a little bit more than the brushed silver or brushed nickel or whatever that stuff was that came with Ikea. So I like them and I think they kind of bring it a little bit more custom and rather than the kind of the basic knob. Played hide and seek for hours, raised our shadows among the pines. So offshore, playful and free, without a care in the world. I was one rich little girl, daydreamer, kidnap me, take me back all the way back.
to grow. This basket has some paint supplies in it. This basket has some different um, craft supplies that we use for school all the time. This pretty box I got for my birthday. It has copy paper. <laughs> There's also copy paper down here and in here, which I have to figure out a better system for that, but I've got some construction paper and those are our video manuals for school. And then the next cupboard, not cupboard, I suppose they are cupboards, but bookshelf. This one up here has some of Scotty's games. You saw me organizing that earlier. I like that little plant from Target and the bird is from my grandma when she passed away. This has more craft supplies, glitter, hole punchers, glitter glue, that sort of thing that I don't want the kids to have access to. Here's my little Play-Doh box and there's some like colored cardstock in that light blue box I got at Joann's. I got these two wooden vases from my mother-in-law for Mother's Day, which is really sweet. And then these books don't fit upright because each shelf is only 11 inches tall, so it barely fits a sheet of paper. I did not know that when I bought these, but I probably still would have bought them. And they're not adjustable. There's one spot for each shelf. We have our other school supplies down here that we access every day, like pencil sharpeners, glue, extra pencils, tape, flashcards are in here, our different like skin tone colored pencils and crayons, stapler, some extra little kid scissors and stuff like that in that one. And then over here we have some dominoes. Forbidden games. These are some more games that did not fit down below, but I thought they were pretty enough to go up above. So this National Parks game is really pretty. Brass and Dune are pretty. This is the box that had some more of his games that you saw me organizing when I built it. There's our wedding album. Look at that, me and Scotty. And then our marble run in that basket. Fits perfectly up there. And then in the last one, we have that basket has some like Ziploc bags and extra stuff for Scotty's games when he's organizing inside the boxes. We have some books, my Harry Potter illustrated books. The fifth one is coming out in September. Can't wait. Um, some extra Bibles and some of Scotty's books. This is the other one of those boxes and it has a bunch of my puzzles in it. Um, and then this one has kids puzzles. Oh, this one has the puzzles. The other one over on the other end, that one has um, games like card games and stuff like that. And then I have a special spot for my Cricut now. It's not just hanging out in its box. And then I have this little basket for the cord, some little envelopes that I'd use if I make cards with the Cricut and my X-Acto knife that I don't want the kids to have access to. Up on top, we have that box there has probably six or seven sets of Dominion with, I mean, expansions, the base game and the expansions. The black box on top has my like Cricut extra mats, the 12 by 12 mats. Um, actually, it's down, but behind me now but the um router that we have plugged in up there you can see that white thing up there is the plug that we put up there the router hides behind that wingspan game i put that up there because i think it's pretty and it hides the router <laughs> our globe does not fit in the 11 inch shelves but i wanted it to be on display so i'll have to figure out i might put it over on scotty's um a video game table because we do need to access that sometimes during school and then his other game, Eclipse, that I thought wasn't wasn't too, it wasn't ugly enough to go in the bottom. <laughs> it's a pretty game, but there it is in all its glory. And we're gonna have more school books coming soon for next year. I think I'm gonna probably keep all the readers and stuff together in here, but I am so happy with how it turned out.
thank you so much for watching and I hope that you are having a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever it is that you are watching this. And yeah, catch you in the next one.